What's up guys, today we are talking about my biggest surprising and disappointing whiskeys of 2021. This is one of my favorite videos to make each year because not only do I get a multitude of opinions in the comments, but I feel like I get a chance to talk about some great whiskeys you may have missed this year and vent about some other ones that disappointed me for what could be for one of many reasons. The list includes a mix of small distilleries and some heavy hitters. Let me know down in the comments your top surprises and disappointments for 2021. Let's get it started on the Mash and Drum. All right, so I'll be alternating between surprises and disappointments. Let's start with my first pleasant surprise of 2021. I had this early on in the year, which is a, a pretty polarizing distillery for a lot of you out there, George Dickel. So back in the summer of 2021, George Dickel released their 15 year old single barrel Tennessee whiskey. This is a new ongoing release that joins their other shared whiskeys, including the classic number eight and superior number 12, featuring a beautiful 15 year age statement and a $60 price tag really making it one of the best values on the market today, no matter how you feel about Dickel or not. Now, let me be clear. These single barrels have a big range when it comes to proof, going as low as the 80 proof range and going all the way up to over 100 proof. Now, the single barrels at the high end of that spectrum, that 104 proof or more that I've had, personally are delicious. Honestly, I don't care what anyone says about Dickel. This one really surprised me. And on top of that, you could find store picks like this one uh, which has a 15 year age statement on it, but it's actually 17 years old. What was the price? Still about 65 bucks. Whatever you may feel about George Dickel whiskey overall, these higher proof 15 year single barrels at 60 to 65 bucks are well worth the gamble, no matter what type of whiskey you like. I'm also gonna add this George Dickel bourbon to the mix. That's right, George Dickel released a bourbon. For any of you out there that still think a Tennessee whiskey cannot be called a bourbon, you're wrong. Now, when I reviewed this, I really didn't think it was overwhelmingly good. It was a solid pour. What I really loved about it and why it was so surprising was the fact that it had a nice bold eight-year-old age statement on it, and you could get it for anywhere from 24 to maybe 30 bucks. Uh, when it comes to value, George Dickel is very hard to beat, and I think in 2021, these two options, these two new releases definitely showed that. First disappointment is Bardstown Bourbon Company Discovery Series 5. Coming off the delicious Discovery 4, the follow-up from Bardstown Bourbon Company was a letdown overall for me and definitely hurt my heart a little bit because I, I usually love the Discovery Series. This one had everything you would expect from the series. They blend of straight bourbon whiskeys, in this case four, with high ages, in this case between six and 13 years old, sourced from Kentucky and Indiana, and oh wait, this one from Kentucky and for the first time, Tennessee. So that meant we saw some George Dickel whiskey in the blend. Now I know I just said how much I love that Dickel 15, and for a long time I've had no problem with Dickel in a blend, but for this one, I don't think it was really just about the Tennessee whiskey in the blend. For the first time, the palate and overall experience for this $130 bourbon came off flat and uninteresting. Even with a little more airtime, it really didn't help it. It was okay. Before $130, I expect a lot more from the Discovery series. Luckily, Discovery 6 ended up being delicious. So this was kind of a short-lived disappointment by the Dream Team over at Barstown Bourbon Company. My next surprise came out of Heaven Hill. And for the first time, Larceny Barrel Proof finally had what I was looking for from a cast strength weeder. The B521 is the Larceny Barrel Proof I expected since 2020. It took them four tries to get there, but the B521 had the sweet, fruity, and balanced flavors I wanted and expected from a Larceny Barrel Proof. Now, I haven't been able to taste the C921 yet, but I've heard good things. I really hope that Heaven Hill continues this trend with Larceny Barrel Proof at 65 bucks and a chance to get a Barrel Proof weeded bourbon at three times a year. I can only hope this stays consistent and gets even a little better as we go on because those first releases I was not a fan of. I tried this and it was a complete turnaround. All right, next disappointment is Little Book Chapter 5, The Invitation. Now, Little Book Chapter 5 is a blend of four different straight whiskeys, a two-year-old Kentucky straight bourbon distilled by Jim Beam and barreled at a lower proof than normal, a three-year-old malted 100% rye never before released from the Beam distillery, a five-year-old Kentucky straight bourbon, and finally, a 15-year-old Kentucky straight bourbon, all for an MSRP of 125 bucks and bottled at a almost 117 proof. Listen, I love Jim Beam and I have been a fan of the Little Book series since its inception. The art of blending young whiskey and old whiskey isn't lost on me, but asking folks to shell out 125 bucks or more for it is a different story. Now, at that price point, I feel like it's gotta be a hitter. And while it was okay, I definitely felt myself wanting more from the blend. 
We really never found out how much of that 15 year was in the blend. No proportions were given. Maybe that would have changed my mind a little bit. Interesting blend, yes, but not a $125 one by any means. Next surprise for me was this budget 1783 from Evan Williams. Damn, that's a big friggin' bottle. <laughs> Evan Williams 1783 was relaunched back in June. New glass bottle as well as small batch on the label to signify the bourbon inside is a mingling of 300 barrels or less. Now it used to only be 86 proof, but this is now 90 proof, includes barrels six to eight years old and retails for only about 20 bucks for a 750 milliliter bottle. Now this is the 1.75 and I think this one I paid about 35 to 40 for it. So still a good deal. Now, while this is not a mind blowing bourbon, I think for about $20, this is a very welcome upgrade to the old 1783. Good spice, cinnamon, nuttiness, chocolate, caramel, all the good things you'd expect from a solid Heaven Hill bourbon. A little bit of spice that hangs around on the finish, which I really liked. A damn nice pour for about $20-ish. And in today's day and age, we can all use more available and affordable bourbons. Great job to Heaven Hill on this one. Next disappointment. Here we go. The Redbreast Cast Strength Small Batch. Now, there were rumors for a long time that the beloved Redbreast 12 Cast Strength was going to be discontinued. No official statement was ever made, but there haven't been any TTB filings for the new label since 2019. Now, this is non-age stated, so we don't have that big, beautiful 12 number on the front of the label anymore. Uh, but this is a nine-year-old single pot still Irish whiskey made from a mash of malted and unmalted barley. It's a blend of ex-bourbon and Spanish sherry butts and then vatted together into an Oloroso sherry cask for an additional 10 weeks. It's essentially the same process they use for Redbreast Lustau with a shorter finishing time and a higher ABV. This really sounded good and I really wanted to love this, but a lot of youthful notes made this one a big disappointment. Very peppery, grassy, floral, kind of killed the sherry influence for me. It drinks a little bit hot and it really made me miss the 12 year age stated cast rank bottle. When I compared this to the Redbreast 12 cast rank, it wasn't even close. For 103 bucks, this one was a big disappointment. Bring back the 12 year age stated cast rank, please. Next surprise came from a distillery named Blue Note out of Memphis, Tennessee, which is a place known for its own distinct brand of the blues. And Blue Note Bourbon made its debut with its nine year old small batch in 2018 with a mission statement to capture the Memphis vibe in a bottle of whiskey. Now I hadn't tasted anything of theirs until 2021. The 17 year I had was one of the most surprising things I've tasted considering it's sourced from George Dickel and the whiskey does not go through the Lincoln County process with that high corn content gave it a very sweet and buttery type of mouthfeel. So after I tried this, I kind of wanted to try everything of theirs. They have their juke joint, which is only three to four years old. It's distilled in Kentucky, but it's aged in Memphis and then combined in 20 barrel batches. It's a non-chill filter and only about 30 bucks. They also have this one, which is an uncut version of the juke joint. They have their crossroads that you have here that was finished in toasted French oak, a nine year age stated small batch and a single barrel variant to go along with the 17 year. If you haven't tried anything from Blue Note, I don't think they have large distribution just yet, but see if you have a friend or someone that can maybe help you try to find one and give it a go. They are putting out some fantastic stuff and they're all really pretty affordable. All right, so next disappointment for me was Five Brothers Bourbon out of Heaven Hill. Just gave them some praise for making Larceny Barrel Proof. Finally so good, but this one was a big miss for me. So Heaven Hill announced the release of Five Brothers Bourbon uh, in June. It's a small batch blending of five ages of bourbon, Five Brothers Bourbon pays homage to the five Shapira brothers who started it all in 1935 for Heaven Hill. Five Brothers Bourbon is comprised of Heaven Hill's traditional bourbon mash bill, aged from five to nine years old to represent each founding brother. Bottled at 90 proof and made available in Kentucky at the Heaven Hill Bourbon Experience for $60 and select retailers in Kentucky for $60 as well. The issue with this bottle for me is it really just came off as a money grab with the story to sell the bottle rather than the whiskey inside. Uh, it's tied to their whiskey experience in the Five Brothers Bar. When you go there, uh, I get how all that ties together and it's, you know, it's a lot of marketing that plays into it. But it's not better than Heaven Hill's own Evan Williams and Elijah Craig Small Batch brands for way less money. Unfortunately, there was a lot of that trend in 2021. Remember that when we dive into our next disappointment. So my next surprise is I wanted to call out here as a group because it represents some of the best craft distilling happening from all around the country. And if I highlighted every single one, this would have been about a four hour video. <laughs> there are small distilleries that I got to try this year that is making incredible whiskey that deserves everyone's attention. 
Uh, starting right here in Columbus, Ohio, a couple distilleries, a few distilleries actually that I really loved. Uh, Middle West Spirits, what they're doing, also Watershed and High Bank doing some great things. ASW out of Georgia is making some of some of the most unique whiskeys that you're going to try. Absolutely love what they're doing. Uh, this still Austin cast strength. It's a two year old Texas bourbon. Probably one of the most impressive two year whiskeys I've ever had in my life. It's just incredible what they're making, especially at that age. Um, I, I've spoken about Driftless Glen a few times. Driftless Glen, if you guys have not tried Driftless Glen, their rye and their bourbons are absolutely ridiculous. Small little distillery in Baraboo, Wisconsin. I like to call it Bugaboo, but it's Baraboo. Their stuff is absolutely ridiculous. You gotta check out Driftless Glen. Spirits of French Lick out of French Lick, Indiana, of course. Definitely check them out. Alan Bishop and the team that they're doing over there. Just making incredible whiskeys as well. Uh, Leaper's Fork out of Tennessee. Uh, great bottled and bond whiskey. Just delicious stuff. Very impressive for the age. Uh, Starlight Distillery, another distillery in Indiana. Uh, Huber's Farm putting out just the Huber's family, I should say. Everything, grain to glass, just making incredible whiskeys. Really unique finishes. Their cigar blend was probably one of the most unique ryes I've ever had. And then lastly, Cedar Ridge out of Iowa. Just incredible whiskeys. They're doing single malts, they're doing bourbons. All these distilleries need to be added to your list immediately as to what to try next if you haven't already. All right, guys, before we get to my next disappointment, let's learn a little bit about Shaker and Spoon. So Shaker and Spoon is a subscription service that teaches you to make bar quality cocktails from recipes designed by award-winning mixologists. Shaker and Spoon builds these boxes around one singular spirit and tries to give you different styles of cocktail making. They give you recipe cards, how-to videos to guide you through mixing and garnishing the cocktail step-by-step -step, and the glossary also, which explains a lot of unfamiliar bartending terms. All right, so let's make this thing. Add infused rum, syrup, and liquid smoke to a shaker. Let's do that first. Honey ginger syrup. I love honey and ginger, so this should be good. Three drops of liquid smoke. This is basically liquid barbecue here. So just three drops. And it says shake it up until we see some frost outside the shaker. Strain into a Collins glass. This isn't a Collins glass, but I love this, uh, this glass. So I'm gonna strain that in there. Add some tobacco bitters. Very excited about these. Top with this yuzu soda. Says about two to three ounces. Pretty cool looking. I don't think I've ever had a rum cocktail like that. That's pretty damn delicious. I love the smoke and the tobacco in there. That offsets the, the sweetness of the rum. Now the subscription starts at $50 a month, but click the link below in the description and use the code Mash and Drum at checkout, or go to shakerandspoon.com slash mashanddrum1221 for $20 off your first box. Again, shakerandspoon.com slash mashanddrum1221, or just click the link below and use code Mash and Drum for $20 off your first box. And remember earlier when I talked about a money grab and brands charging a lot of money for mediocre and young whiskey? Meet Blue Run, my next disappointment. Now I bought this 200 to $250 14 year bourbon sourced from an undisclosed location, selected and blended by industry legend Jim Rutledge and backed by marketing giants from Facebook, Nike and other high profile marketing executives. If you listen to their interviews or podcasts or read about their marketing tactics, it's basically a business built on exploiting the current bourbon boom and lack of customer knowledge through current marketing tactics. They obviously didn't have a clue on what makes a good bourbon, so to give themselves credibility, they hired legendary distiller Jim Rutledge as liquid advisor to source high-aged whiskey, craft young whiskeys, and had a Nike designer put a different color butterfly on the bottles. And they put all those different color butterflies in the bottle so all of us would go out and pay a premium to collect them all, like Pokemon cards, and it's working. On top of that, their website is a treasure trove of buzzwords, hashtags, millennial marketing terminology used to sell you their whiskey. Look, this 14 year old bourbon was good, thought it drank very light and easy, uh, very sweet, which is what I think they were going for to appeal to a mass market. But for me, it lacked finish and the complexity I look for, especially in a bourbon that's 200 to $250. One positive thing I could say is their younger whiskey, like the Golden Rye Whiskey and High Rye Bourbon, showed promise at a young age, but I still don't like the prices on them at $100 and $90 respectively, considering for me they both were pretty uninteresting overall. They're a little flat, a little too delicate, and just uninteresting. Now if their stuff gets older and their pricing stays the same, which I highly doubt, I'd be willing to try them. But for now, Blue Run to me is a brand counting on the lack of customer knowledge and their marketing tactics so consumers will chase all their different color butterflies that I see on secondary all day long being flipped. In my opinion, when it comes to chasing their butterflies, you can keep the net. 
All right, my next big surprise was Booker's, the return of Booker's, that's right. I had two batches of Booker's this year that I thought were really good, particularly the Bartstown batch and the Tagalong batch. I'm not saying this gets me back into buying every release again, but at least it restores my faith in Booker's a little bit. I still think it's priced too high, but a lot of whiskeys are these days. But it's good to see Booker's, or at least two of their four releases, get back to that flavor profile of Booker's that I love so much. All right, another disappointing high price bottle was the Ardbeg Ardbeg Committee release. This is a single malt scotch matured in X rye whiskey casks, bottled at cast strength. This latest release paid homage to the recently retired Mickey Heads, the legendary warehouse manager who worked at Ardbeg for 13 years. Now this bottle was 180 bucks and not nearly good enough to warrant the price point. Was it somewhat interesting with the rye casks? Yeah, but I think part of that is the Ardbeg core range is so damn good that I feel like these committee releases are getting really hard to compete with their own core range. But for 180 bucks, these committee releases need to be mind blowing. There's too much really good single malt whiskey to ask folks to spend 180 on a bottle for a non eight stated whiskey with a, you know, cute finish, a nice story. I love Ardbeg, but this committee release was a big disappointment. Let's hope we see higher age whiskey with an age statement and some interesting maturation on future committee release releases. Now my next surprise of the year is actually, this is the last one I'm gonna call out, and this is actually my World Whiskey of the Year. Blue Spot Seven Year Cast Strength. Now, just like the maturation profiles we see in Yellow Spot and Red Spot, this uses whiskeys matured in ex-bourbon and ex-sherry with the inclusion of Madeira casks. Now they state that the components ages range between seven to 20 years old, bottle at cast strength of 58.7 ABV, which does vary from batch to batch. It's non-chill filtered, and you could have found these for about 100 bucks. Now, I knew this bottle would be good, but I didn't think it would be as ridiculously good as it ended up being. Um, this is my second bottle, and I'm trying to sip this rather uh, slowly because I'm not sure when the next time this is going to be released, but if anybody sees this ever, this is an automatic buy. I absolutely love this one. Uh, got to try a lot of great single malt whiskeys and some Irish whiskeys this year, and this was a definite, definite standout. This has a nice big H statement on the front with a big seven year, and we know there's up to 20 year old whiskey in it. And you could definitely taste that age in it because you get flavors in there that you really only get from high age Irish whiskeys. You get things like pineapple, you get lime, you get even kiwi. And then it's also dark at the same time. You get some chocolate notes in there. There's a nuttiness to it. It's, it's extremely complex, it's very balanced, it's got the proof to hold its own, it's very velvety, it's viscous. This was an absolute monster and my biggest surprise for uh, 2021. Absolutely killer of a bottle. All right, well that is the end of my top disappointing and surprising whiskeys for 2021. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments what your top surprises and what your top disappointments were. Uh, always looking forward to the comments uh, for this video. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share with. Cheers, and I'll see you next time right here on the Mastin' Drum. I'm gonna sip a little bit more of this blue spot. Take care, everybody.